Afternoon everyone and welcome to my next vlog which is taking place here at Gainsborough Golf Club in Gainsborough funnily enough. I am here today because I am doing a pin putter fitting. It's all part of a golf monthly putting supplement which is coming out on July the 16th. Don't forget to pick up your copy. The reason I'm doing it is because I was just curious about what is involved with a putter fitting. I've kind of done one before with Scotty Cameron, it wasn't massively in depth, but I really wanted to kind of dive deep into things like shaft length, head shape, alignment aids, grip, all those sorts of things and find out how they impacted the strike, the path, the alignment to help you guys kind of know what you should be looking at when choosing a putter and also what kind of processes you should go through when getting fitted for a putter, obviously. All brands do their own different putter fittings with different technologies. We know that Ping has their own app, which we're gonna go into, obviously, in this vlog. But I just thought I'd take you guys along for the ride. Got some admin to do first. I haven't forgotten about the tailor-made wedge that I gave away in a recent vlog. So let's fast forward to me back at home tonight with the random YouTube comment generator where we will now pick a winner. Hello, welcome to my very untidy office. Apologies for that, but we are now on the website where we're gonna pick the comment from the chipping vlog to see who's gonna win that tailor-made milled grind wedge. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna click in there, paste the URL, hit that, click that, see if this works. Who is the winner? Bob Stanko. You have won the tailor-made milled grind 56 degree wedge, which should fit in nicely with your 60. Maybe you've got a 52 as well, so hopefully that will fit in nicely. Okay, so hopefully you'll agree that was fair. Well done to the winner. That wedge will be in the post to you very soon. For this vlog, I do have a prize. Not one, but two sleeves of tailor-made Project A balls and I have got a Superstroke counter core grip. This is the Pistol GT 1.0. So if you're interested in winning both of these prizes, this grip with the adjustable weight in the top, there you can see it there, and the two sleeves of Project A balls by TaylorMade, I want you to comment on the video. Tell me A, what putter you use, and B, what is the thing that you look for most when choosing a putter? Is it the look of it at a dress? Is it the feel of the grip? Is it the roll of the ball off the face? I really wanna know what thing you prioritize when picking a putter. And also, I'm not gonna give any prizes away until this video reaches 300 likes. I set you a target of 100 likes for the tailor-made wedge, and you absolutely smashed it. So I'm gonna set you a much sterner challenge for this one. 300 likes, and then those prizes will be sent to one of you who comment on the video. But for now, my time slot is nearly upon me, so I'm gonna go down those stairs and start my ping putter fitting process. So let's go. Basically when we do a ping footer fitting, what we're going to do, we, we'll look at, first thing we'll look at is shape of head, what people like to see, what the tendencies are, what they don't like to see, so head shape is very important. We'll get you on, a, on the uh, iPing putter app and what that'll do, that'll give us a lot of information about that person's stroke type. So we'll go through what type of arc that person is, how that person delivers a face through impact how much loft they add onto the butt, onto the golf club, lie angle, consistency as well. So we'll do a series of five putts to work out what's happening with that particular putter. And then we go from there. So we start looking a bit more in depth. Um, obviously length of putter is very, very important. So that's something we'll definitely look at. So there's a whole series of things that we'll tend to, to do. Obviously head size, weight of that putter. We can tell from the tempo of the their putting stroke, if they're gonna need something quite heavy or quite light to help them uh, get the ball near the hole a little bit easier. 
So there's a, there's a whole series of things that we'll, we'll go through. You have got an awful lot of putters. Yes. I mean, there's going to be a bit of a test now in the round, isn't it? But uh, should we get started? Yeah, let's get started. Let's see what we can do with you. This works on a traffic light system. So if you look at the screen there, you can see that our five segments for each one of those puts, that's come up green, okay? Anything that comes up green, we know is very, very consistent. Anything that comes up an amber, yellow color is still okay, just a little bit less consistent. The one thing we're, we kind of really don't want in there is a, a lot of the sections in, in red. It shows that really there's a little bit of inconsistency there and there's something there that can be improved on. First thing we see down there, it's going to give us a, a handicap or a consistency score. So it's no different to a playing handicap. So the lower the score, the better you are. That's good. So that's really good. That's a good start. Yeah, 0 0.5, plus five, so, so very, very consistent. So we know a lot of the components of your putting stroke, you know, is, is, is very consistent. So it's going to give us a closing angle, okay? So we know that everybody that walks through the door will generally be one of three types of stroke, if you like. So you'll either have a slight arc, you'll have a strong arc, or you'll be straight back and through. So I would say the majority of people that we fit tend to be a slight or a strong arc. Um, although what we tend to see, the buying habits, people probably want to go out and buy more of a face balanced putter. And that's not to say that that's wrong, but you definitely measure into what most people tend to measure into a slight arc. So your closing angle um, of your stroke is, is 5.2 degrees. So that's measuring from the furthest point back in your putting stroke back to the, to the ball. Next thing we see is your impact angle. And you did say that you had a tendency to pull your putts a little bit, mm. miss them a little bit left. So you can see there, your face is actually a degree and a half close through impact as an average as well. Very consistent in what you do. Close to the, from the starting point. Shape of head, maybe we could go to a strong arc, which is a little bit more toe weighted. If what we're looking at is if we give you a putter that might open that face a little bit, is it gonna make you any more consistent or not? So again, putting tempo. So that's a measurement in time of putter going back from the ball at set up, back through, um, through impact. Um, so 1.6, I would say, is on the slightly quicker side of things. And again, if distance control was, a, was an issue, we could look at the weight of your putter and try and match that tempo up with the weight of the putter to see if that improves or not. So your lie angle is going to be slightly flat, I would look at, think looking at that. So we're going to have a look. We have a recommendation, ping recommendation. So based on those puts, we probably will find that, that if you're quite consistent in, in your setup and, and, and your putting stroke, we're probably going to find that that's not going to change too much. Um, Shaffling as well, you're actually different to what we tend to see. You tend to de-loft the putter through impact whereas we tend to find a lot of people tend to add loft. So your hands are forward through impact. So if we press that recommendation button, okay, so that will give you a stroke type. So you definitely measure into a slight arc. We know that you bang in the middle of, of, of that reading. Lie angle standard 20 degrees for ping, which is a black lie angle. We color code everything, of course. Um, and because you tend to de-loft the putter through impact, we're going to add a degree of loft onto that putter so by the time you're you're delivering that putter to the ball we've got the correct amount of loft on that putter for your your stroke so it's a case now of obviously we want to try something similar to what you're using because at the minute it's not we're not using a ping putter so we're going to we're going to set something up similar um, but it's a case of going through different sh shapes different models to see what suits your eye to match that into um, what Iping recommends for you as well.
that's interesting, look. That is interesting. Wow. So, we know it's longer than yours. So are we gonna get now the same specs? So that's not to say what you've got is wrong. Yeah. So if you set up to that, see, so I would probably say you're probably a little bit more over the ball. Settled on winner, that, uh, yeah, Volt 2.0 Stealth um, Answerdale. Yeah. Black Put the black shaft in there for you, yeah, no problem. And we're going to keep you that PP62 grip as well. So one thing we definitely found with you, purely from a feel point of view, you just preferred the feel of that thicker grip, which is what you've got on your existing putter anyway. So, interestingly, uh, when we moved to that Dale Answer, both times we've tried you on the Platinum and we've tried you on uh, the Stealth. Your, your, your putting data was very good. So the first time we tried it with the Stealth, you were 2.3. Now we're at 2.8. Cool, thank you very much. You're welcome. Right, so that's the fitting done. There's no question I left there knowing which putter was not only best for my game, but also the one that suited my eye the best. We know that ping make an awful lot of different styles of putter, whether that's in the Sigma G or the Volt 2.0 range. And uh, the Dale Answer was the putter that worked best for me. It was also the one I thought would best work best for me. And it was the one that I thought would suit my eye the best. And obviously they have three different finishes. So it's nice to have the option in one shape to choose the coloring that you like. And I've gone for that black shaft as well, which I think will look really smart. I would say that the process and the technology that Ping use is pretty basic compared to a lot of systems that are out there. I'm not saying that, that other brands use them, for example, the Sam Putting Lab or the Quintex system go into really loads of detail about what the ball's doing, what the putter's doing. The iPing app is pretty basic in terms of the information that it offers, but it is really quick and simple to use. It just uses five putts and then it will give you uh, a variety of different numbers and your uh, handicap. I think the tolerances of the iPing app are quite loose in that a relatively repeatable stroke will produce a very good handicap. The closing rate was interesting to see how that changed and trying to pick a putter with as much toe weighting as possible to reduce that. Why I initially went for the uh, ZB, I think it's called, which has really loads of toe hang, but eventually settled for the Dale Answer because it has that sight line on the back and it's something that I'm used to seeing and like seeing when I'm addressing the putts. I feel like it helps my alignment a little bit, whereas that putter had a dot and it was a, a lot shorter from front to back, so it didn't really uh, help me. Another thing I found really interesting was the effect that the grip size had on my results. So I definitely felt more comfortable with the larger PP62 grip and when he gave me the answer in a slightly thinner grip, my club face control definitely got worse. I didn't hold as many putts with it. So switching back to that grip instantly saw my results improve. So the grip does have a massive difference on not only the feel of the putter, but also your club face control as well. So you really need to work out which size and shape of grip works for you. And I'd actually say that the ping oversized grips that are on offer are actually some of the best that I've tested. They're a nice tacky material, they're a really nice shape. You can buy them separately, uh, not just via a ping fitting or with a ping putter. It was interesting with the shaft length, how I uh, felt more comfortable with a much longer putter. It was 35 inches. I've used a 34 inch putter pretty much all my life. So to go up to a 35 without knowing what it was and then finding out that it was an inch longer was interesting. The other thing about the fitting today was that we only did 10 foot putts and I kind of thought it would be useful to see how each putter kind of worked from different ranges. So short range, long range, that kind of thing. And maybe that's something that you can do if you ask for it, but um, it's not something that Ping tend to do when they do a putter fitting here at Gainsborough, which I was a little bit surprised about. 
So I hope you enjoyed that vlog. Hopefully it gave you an insight into what goes on during a putter fitting and the type of things that you need to be thinking about when choosing a new putter and the reasons for it. As always, like the video if you haven't liked it already. Remember, we need to get 300 likes for me to give away those prizes. Check out all my other vlogs, all the other videos on the Golf Monthly website and YouTube channel. But for now, from a cloudy, windy Gainsborough, it's goodbye.